Bismillah al-Ashaq al-Batil. In the name of God, the one who brings about the annihilation of falsehood. As previous cases, subsequent cases, and especially the Jimmy Savile case, spectacularly proved beyond any shadow of a doubt into a moral certainty, to its elites, pedophilia is as British as Yorkshire pudding. As such, rather than being any kind of democracy, which it never has been to begin with, the UK, in actuality, is an authoritarian paidocracy, rule by pedophiles. This state of affairs is due to the fact that the Anglo-Saxon slash Anglo-American wetico, or demon, is and has always been a blood-sucking vampire of innocence. It feeds on the violation of innocence in order to perpetuate itself and survive. This is its occult trademark and explains why the Anglo-American elites have always been so attracted to darkness and maleficity in all of its forms. Example, Crowley, Ona, Lovecraft, et al. And why, as increasing academic research proves, they, rather than the Europeans, are the actual progenitors and enablers of fascism in all of its species and in all of its periods. And why they, rather than the Jews who have been falsely accused, and which Max Weber proved in his the Protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism, are the literal inventors of the capitalist system in all of its stages up to its present neoliberal form. Among other things, this is because social vampirism, with the violation of innocence, is precisely the way the Anglo-American empire has always operated, and how it has perpetuated itself, first against its own, and then later against the world, at every stage of its evolution. And hence, why pedophilia is hardwired into the DNA fabric of its very Heideggerian docile, and is one of its core modus operandi. In other words, the Anglo-Saxon establishment and pedophilia are synonymous, peas and carrots of the same wicked broth. So I want to see the UK collapse into a rubble heap of dust. It is high time that this center and core of the inequity on the planet since the burning of the Spanish Armada by Elizabeth I in 1588 finally gets its long overdue comeuppance with a taste of its own bitter medicine, which it has dished out to others across the globe, and so just simply collapses as a society and a power. And when this is done by its very own hands, all the better. This would be divine justice after 431 years wherein the British system and its elites have sown nothing but inequity, discord, mayhem, destruction, and corruption upon this planet from the north to the south poles first against their own, and then against the planet as a whole. So all those people panicking over Brexit, I say, let the limey elites fall. The Europeans, if they have any sense, will carry on without these Brit plutocrats and their minions, and will be all the better for it too. All the good people living on that North Atlantic island dominated by orcs, get out and make a better life for yourself elsewhere, and simply let Britannia and its wicked system go to hell. Now, Roya and I initially met online, and later, as we established our relationship, I went out to the UK to help her unravel the unbelievable legal situation she had found herself in over there. Seeing how I have a legal background. What I encountered in the UK after speaking to countless attorneys, families affected, and generally experiencing the system over there for myself blew my mind and this was in 2011. I have read through all of Roya's case files a dozen times over which are several boxes full and which if I am pushed by these demons in the UK I will info dump all over the internet in multiple locations and no lawyer or independent judicial review who looks at them can fail to conclude that Roya was set up and that the entire judicial process of the UK family court system was rigged and designed towards a miscarriage of justice and the rewarding of the perpetrator. Unfortunately, Roya's situation was not an isolated incident, because blatant human rights violations such as this perpetrated by the British family court system, its social services and local councils, has become a fixed feature of that place and are now second nature to it.
A dozen German lawyers and ones who have had careers arguing cases in front of the German Constitutional Court or High Court have also looked at Roya's case independently of me and concluded similarly. This has all become business as usual in the UK and there are literally thousands of women and families affected similarly, some of whom have left the UK and are now living in various EU jurisdictions as well as elsewhere. That aside, a key feature of this problem in the UK is that when you, have, when you begin to dig further, you see that the child protection in the UK, not to mention the actual fiscal operations of local councils with its social services, has been turned into a for-profit industry due to massive privatization by the UK state, beginning with, the Thatch with Thatcher, but also undertaken by the Blairites of the Labour Party which is literally controlled by private interests and corporations whose beneficiaries are also riddled with pedophiles from the top of the system to the bottom. And all the elements of the state, from law enforcement to the courts, to the local councils, to the social services, to Westminster, to both major parties, cooperate with the state of affairs because they are literally beholden to the, those private corporate interests profiting from it. In other words, in the UK, we have legalized child snatching, i.e. forced adoption, and legal trickery by the state and its judicial organs to that end for the benefit of corporatocracy, using child protection laws as a false cover and smokescreen, and all for the ultimate benefit of the entrenched paidocracy. That said, Roya came to Berlin from London in autumn 2011 when I, when I had to return to Australia because my father was taken seriously ill, later dying of cancer in Townsville, Australia in February 2012. Under law in the UK, one is supposed to register every pregnancy. So just before I left London back to Australia in late August 2011, Roya and I went to the Whittington Hospital to register Roya's pregnancy. They gave us a questionnaire asking all kinds of stupid questions and it was obvious to me that the nature of the subsequent questioning by the nurse and the form she gave us to fill out was completely beyond the pale of all basic medical etiquette that I, that I had known up to that point, a fact which I told the nurse point blank. After I left the UK and returned to Oz, Roya started receiving all kinds of weird phone calls claiming to be from medical specialists from other London hospitals who were asking similar questions, wanting to know all kinds of detailed information about my family background and offering all kinds of irrelevant advice about genetic diseases prevalent among Iranians and South Asians. In mid-December 2011, I called Whittington Hospital myself from Brisbane, Australia, and was told point blank by the receptionist of the maternity section that Roya had personally come to the hospital only two weeks prior and taken my name off of the pregnancy files, which they claimed Roya was entitled to do by law. Except Roya was not in the UK when they claimed this happened. She was already here in Berlin, and I have evidence to that end, as well as affidavits of multiple people who spent time with her in Berlin during the timeline the receptionist of Whittington Hospital maintains Roya had come and changed the data in London. This fiddling of the files of the pregnancies would have been done by either Hackney Social Services, who have a long documented history of this kind of skullduggery, and who were the London social services involved in Roya's case, or Mr. G himself. The phone conversation with the receptionist was recorded on my end, as well as my subsequent conversation with the head of maternity, all claiming that what had happened was perfectly legal and that Roya, or actually rather someone pretending to be her, had come to the Whittington Hospital and taken my name off the files. There was also an eyewitness on my end to all these conversations in my friend Sam Birch, who has since given an affidavit, which is now part of all the case files. Now, I should also say, given a few bizarre incidents that happened in my 2011 UK trip, there has never been any question either in my mind or Roya's that the hyphen Baha'is had a hand in all of this as well, especially given the fact that I unmasked an active pedophile among them, acting as their active online troll back in 2008. An active pedophile who was finally arrested in 2013 after accidentally sending a text message to a groomed victim's mother. Nevertheless, and as both speculation and evidence has shown, British pedophiles, as enforcers of the system, 
are a tight-knit community who work closely together in support networks of pedophile rings, connected by the same subterranean institutional networks of the UK state itself, which then also means an active pedophile and hireling troll of the hyphen Baha'is places the hyphen Baha'i cult itself within the chains, rungs, and nexuses of these British pedocratic networks. Luckily, we would had our child here in Germany, making her a German citizen and not in the UK because this course of action by the Hackney Social Services slash Mr. G was a premeditated crime in operation designed to snatch our child when she was born which has happened innumerable times in the UK to one or more parents who have had a child already taken away from them. That said, all of this information with the evidence is already in the hands of the most powerful German child protection lobby within Germany itself, as well as German authorities. Since what happened at Whittington Hospital in 2011, i.e. data hacking, in itself was a crime and a human rights violation of the rights of two German citizens, as well as an Australian citizen and German resident beyond the crime and human rights violation already perpetrated by Hackney Social Services, Judge Crine of the Family Court Division, Mr. G's lawyers, Roya's lawyers, the specialist, Mr. G himself, and all those involved in the case against Roya. So with that said, I want nothing more than for Mr. G and his corrupt pedo-protecting cronies, as well as possible child traffickers and possible child pornographers, to come here to Germany so that my friends and I can crucify them all in public in front of the Brandenburg Gate because it would be the height of poetic justice for Mr. G himself to be put in an orange jumpsuit in Germany itself and carted away to serve time in a German prison for this and other related crimes. Example, the attempted murder of another German citizen previous to the case of Roya in the early part of the last decade. As I know he and his corrupt friends are monitoring, I dare you to come here, kitty fiddling demonic motherfuckers. Bring it. I live in order to bring justice on your satanic pedo heads on behalf of Roya that you sick, corrupt, malevolent, demonic bastards deny to everybody else. The Red Mother curses you all from beyond the grave and your days are numbered because she's going to send you all to hell from the great beyond itself. You so-and-sos have thankfully dug your own graves with Brexit, and one of the efficient causes of this event that is daily cutting you to size and reducing you to nothing is, as far as I'm concerned, as a consequence of all the curses that the Red Mother and I sewed together against you in 2011, which has now come to full bloom. In other words, all your chickens of inequity have come home to roost in one fell swoop, and it was our curses against you that has brought you here. So now, go to hell. And jolly good show. Allahu Akhar. Antum duna alin ya ayyuhal Britannia zalil. Falana to Allah wa thumma la natahi bil alf alayn alaykum ya qawma zalameen. Wa ila jahannam bikum kullukum ajma'een. Fahada hukmi Allah alaykum bil adl min rabbal alameen. Ameen.